The Raspberry Pi Pico W is a powerful and affordable Wi-Fi development board. It features the same RP2040 that was on the original Raspberry Pi Pico, but it also has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radio. It's based on the original Raspberry Pi Pico, meaning that all the external 40 pins are pin for pin compatible. So you should be able to transfer your projects from one to the other without changing any code. We're gonna take a tour of the board and talk about its features. Let's get started. At the heart of the Pico W is the RP2040 microcontroller running at 133 megahertz with 256 kilobyte of RAM. It features 30 GPIO, of which 26 are available on the breakout header. There's two megabyte of quad SPI flash for user code and data that you want your code to be able to access. And of course, the thing we're really here for, we have the Infineon wireless interface under this metal can. And this curious pattern on the PCB is the antenna. The wireless interface is an Infineon CYW43439. This supports wireless LAN, BGN, and Bluetooth 5.2. At the time of launch, only wireless LAN is enabled in code, but fingers crossed Raspberry Pi released some drivers for the Bluetooth very shortly. The debug header has moved from this location to above the wireless interface, and the onboard LED is also now controlled by the wireless interface over SPI. It's not connected directly to a GPIO like on the Raspberry Pi Pico. We have the boot cell button for uploading firmware, and over to the right here, we have the very convenient switch mode power supply, which makes the Pico W really easy to power from batteries. More on that later. The onboard RP2040 is most commonly programmed in MicroPython, a powerful and simple interpreted language. Although an Arduino port does exist if you would prefer to program in Arduino or C. Let's take a look at the pinout. We can see the GPIO numbering down the sides. And one thing that you'll notice is that just about every group of GPIO pins can be used as some other periphery. This block of four pins can support an entire SPI bus and also provides both of the I2C buses from the RP2040. And then we have a pair that can be used for UART as well. And this is a really nice flexible feature across the whole Pico W. You can see basically every general purpose input and output also has those secondary functions where you can access either an SPI, I2C, or UART function. So the left side of the board is very regular and digital only. The right side of the board has a few more quirks. We have three channels of analog to digital conversion along with the analog ground. And we also have all the power supply pins. We can see the onboard LED is connected to a pin called WL GPIO0. So it will be driven by the wireless interface, but every other pin present is connected directly to the RP2040. Now, in addition to this very flexible pinout, no overview of an RP2040 board would be complete without at least mentioning programmable I.O. or PIO. PIO essentially allows you to program your own custom hardware interface. And this can be really useful for developing code for esoteric or complex chips. PIO interfaces are driven by state machines that operate completely independently of the main processor. So briefly, you can hand data to the PIO controller and have it move data back and forth while your processor does other more important tasks. If you'd like to learn more about PIO, check out the resources linked at the bottom of this article. Let's talk about power for a minute. The easiest way to power your Pico is through the onboard USB port. Five volt present at this port is also output on VBus, so you can draw power directly from the USB connection. If you'd like to externally power your Pico and you're not going to use USB, you can power it through VBus or through VSYS, which is probably preferred. There's just a diode on board between VBUS and VSYS. If you're going to power your Pico from batteries, the good news is that you can put anywhere between 1.8 to 5.5 volts into VSYS, and that will get converted to a stable three volts for the system by the onboard power supply. That means that it's really easy to power your Pico W directly from alkaline cells, nickel metal hydride cells, or even a single lithium polymer cell. Just make sure that that voltage is going to be between 1.8 and 5.5 volts. Now, if you intend to still be able to connect USB while there is power present on VSYS from say some batteries, then it would be best to power it through a Schottky diode as shown in the data sheet. For more details about these features and specifications, have a look at the data sheet. There's a lot of really useful stuff in there. We have the mechanical drawing, that pinout diagram, 
There's some more advice about how to power your Pico from an external source. This could be our battery source, and that's the Schottky diode into VSYS that I mentioned before. And of course, more details to consider for the wireless interface. And there's even a handy schematic so you know exactly what's happening on the board. If you're excited to get started using the Pico W, then check the bottom of this article for the resources section. We'll add more useful guides there as we make them. Until then, happy making.